Can you spot the bug in this code? Well, I'll make it easier on you by saying there are actually three bugs at least in this code. Let's take a look at what the function claims to do and how it works and where those bugs are. The function accepts two strings, a const care string one and a const care string two. It then declares a local output buffer of max path. Max path is set to 260 on Windows, so it's a fair size buffer. We then stir copy in our first string, we stir cat on a space, and we stir cat on our second string. We then output it, and that should output hello space world if we were to specify hello and world as the two incoming strings. The first problem is fairly obvious. There's absolutely no respecting the size of the output buffer that you're copying the strings into. So if SZ stir 1 and SZ stir 2 were more than 260 characters combined along with the space, it would simply walk into memory, crash your system, and do horrible things. How do we solve this? Well, our first try might be to use something that does respect the buffer size. Stir end copy. So this function is much the same, but it uses stir end copy to copy the first string into the buffer up to max path. It then uses stir end cat to add on the space, and stir end cat again to add on the second string. Then it outputs it. So are we done? Well, not quite. One of the problems is that the end in stir end copy actually represents the number of characters not including the null terminator. So that's our first problem. Let's fix that by passing max path minus one to stir end copy. Are we golden? Well, unfortunately, not quite. The problem with stir and copy is that yes, it does respect the size of the buffer, but if it hits the end of the buffer, it just stops. It does not add a null terminator. If stir and copy hits the end of the buffer, it simply stops writing characters and does not null terminate the string. So your stir and cat is going to wander off into space again. How do we fix this? Well, we need a new function. Stir copy underscore s. This is a new C runtime function, completely official in the standard. Hopefully you're aware of it, but if not, here is your introduction. It accepts the output buffer, the number of characters to write, and the input string. However, if it does reach the end of the string, it does null terminate. That means even if the first one was to fill the buffer, the stir cat would respect that, hey, the buffer is already full because there's no more room and I've hit the null terminator. So it will stop. Unfortunately, this code is rather cryptic and you have to pass max pass minus one, and it's a little weird. If we jump into C++, we see it gets immensely simpler. Now, these two strings should probably be const references, but being that as it is, str1 and str2 are simply combined with a space in between and then output to the cout using the stream operator and then followed by an inline, which is the new line character. All of the memory management is done by the string class itself, and as long as you have heap memory available, which is generally always true these days, or even virtual memory, this function will always succeed and work as you expect it. There's a whole host of unsafe stir copy functions like stir copy, stir copy A and W, the ANSI and Unicode versions, WCS copy, the Windows version, MBS copy, the multibyte copy version, the stir copy A and stir copy A and W, L stir copy. All of these are generally shell and Windows functions. Instead, use stir copy underscore S. Similarly, all of these stir cat functions are also deprecated. That's stir cat, stir cat AW, stir and cat. And all the shell ones, stir cat, stir cat a, stir cat w, the l versions, l stir cat, everything that you've generally got used to using over the years is now unsafe to use. What's amazing to me is the number of times that this function has been rewritten by people who still committed the same general errors. Instead, use stir cat underscore s, which is safe. Next, we turn our attention to sprintf. sprintf is very much like your standard printf function, except instead of writing to the output, it writes its characters to a string. By now, I imagine you can see that the obvious problem here is that if your source string is longer than your target string, it's going to overflow the buffer and crash. Our first attempt might be to switch to SNPrintf. However, there are problems here. Using SNPrintf feels like it might be safe. Unfortunately, there are problems with it as well. The size specifier is generally based on the format specifiers that you send in, and you've got to remember that those are the minimum widths. So even if you carefully calculated, the resulting output string might still be larger than what you expect. This function handles that by returning the number of bytes that it wrote, and it's up to you to check. This code, however, does not check. SprintFS is the safe version that properly respects the buffer size you pass in and does generally exactly what you suspect. Now, in the event it doesn't fit, you should check the return value to see how many characters were written, but it's safe and won't trash memory. As before, there's a whole host of printf functions into strings that are not safe. Sprintf W and A, the ANSI Unicode versions, the WS printf, all of these getting up to WVSN printf W. 
All of the legacy SN printf functions are ambiguous about whether or not they null terminate the buffer when the limit is reached, and so you should use SN printf underscore s instead. I to A. Could it get much simpler? And yet, it's still not safe. In this case, we pass in two integers, and we declare two output buffers. We then print them with a space in between, and that should work. And in fact, this will because we've declared outrageously large buffers of 260 characters instead of the small amount that it actually needs. And so your two options are to declare really large buffers that are wasteful or to run the risk of trashing memory. How do we fix it? Well, you've probably guessed by now. I to A underscore S. First, we calculate the length of the two buffers. We're going to use the count of operator in C, which is reasonably new, so you may not be familiar with it. The difference is that instead of returning the size of the array in bytes, like size of wood, it returns the number of elements, or the count of elements in that array. Once we have the two lengths, we can include those in our new call to I to A underscore S, which will respect the output buffer length. Of course, in this example, we are still declaring large buffers, but we could have gone with 16 instead of max path. String tokenization is a concept that a lot of people understand in general, but haven't written code to do. What it does is it walks an input string and breaks it into words at the delimiter that you specify. The original C versions modify your buffer in place, and then it returns a pointer to the next place in the string after the token where you pick up again. So if you tokenize hello you big fat wonderful world on space, it would yield all six words individually. Let's look at a classic example of tokenizing a string. First, we call strtoke to obtain the first token, and while the token is not null, we print it out with a space and then search for the next token. When we're done, we use putS to terminate the line. Now the problem here is that it's partying on your memory and you have no idea how big your memory is. So, by using strtoke underscore s, we can do it safely. Rather than modifying the string in place, it provides you with another value, rest, which is where the rest of the string can be found. So in this case, we call strtoke underscore s to get the first token and where to pick up, and then we continue looking for tokens, updating the rest variable each time. When we're done, we put out that same new line, and it should output exactly what we want and do it safely. In C++, it's similar but much easier. We're going to use a string stream initialized from the input string, and we're going to use getLine to read stuff out of it. As we do those tokens, we're going to call cout and then the token and a space. When we're done, we output an endline, and everything works exactly as expected. Scanf, or string scanf, reading from strings, is another area where people run into trouble. Given an input string, such as hello world, you then give it a format specifier that indicates what it expects to find in the string. It basically operates the inverse of printf. So if we were looking for the two strings in that one larger string separated by a space, we could ask for percent %s, space, percent %s. The original C versions, though, have no support for output buffer links. If hello is longer than expected, it's going to overwrite memory. Here's an unsafe example. We pass in the input string and we declare two output buffers. We then read the two strings, which we expect to be separated by a space, into outstring 1 and outstring 2, and then print them back out with a space in between. The problem here again is that outstring 1 and outstring 2 are of unknown length. To fix that, we use scanf underscore s, and here's how you use it. Again, we calculate the length of the two output buffers with the count of operator, and then we're going to scan those two strings in. After the format specifier comes each of the variables, but in this case, each is accompanied by a length. So our first output variable is outstring1, and it is len1 long. Our second one is outstring2, and it is len2 long. This works perfectly, and will never corrupt memory. Generally, you can assume that all of the legacy functions here are unsafe for scanf, and you should instead use scanfs, or s and scanfs instead. If you have any interest in matters related to autism, Asperger's, or ASD, or perhaps know somebody that is impacted by them, please check out my book on Amazon, Secrets of the Autistic Millionaire. It's got nothing to do with money and everything to do with living a successful life on the spectrum. Essentially, it's everything I wish I'd known back then that I know now. In the meantime, please like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll do more videos like this one if it turns out to be well-received. In the meantime, and in between time, I hope to see you next time, right here in Dave's Garage.